Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is something I talk about regularly. And there's a lot of background noise here, so I'm going to apologize for that in, a per in advance. But openly, when a man is on the go and he's traveling because he has no home, he literally has to find a place to work any chance he gets. And that's the way life is for people who are on the go. In our lifetime, we have many opportunities to help people. We have many opportunities to crap on them, too. But in truth, who we are as a Christian is based on how we handle ourselves and how we don't boy in on people's lives. and We don't ignore our own needs in our own moments of time. The reality is that in life, we have lots of things to do in life. We have to realize that when we do things that are inappropriate to others, we all will get to no payback in heaven for them. And that's something that a lot of people don't recall. See, only a certain portion of the Bible is often talked about in religious realms, especially in synagogues and churches. And it looks like I get to hear all the wonderful noises of the shop that I'm in and I've been eating in since the early morning hours when I woke up. But I have to tell you, there's some wonderful young people in the staff here, some really good black folks, some really good folks with special needs, and some amazing young people who are in management. That's kind of unusual for this establishment. I've seen a lot of bad managers in this company, but in this particular one, it's very good, and I'm pleased about that. But I'm not off course in that. You see, McDonald's is a company that employs people all over the nation, all over the world, in fact. When I was in Japan living with my family, I would take my son after Saturday school, which is a requirement of Japanese language in their culture, to go to school on Saturdays several uh, weeks of the month. But in truth, we would always go over to the McDonald's, where there was a litany of 20-year-olds in the same sort of position, interested in going on in life and loving the fact that they actually worked at McDonald's without the least bit of fear, without the least bit of disregard for the company. They came for it a great deal. And frankly, it's because it has such a good quality name abroad. And those young people loved it. Also, the food is different. We would get teriyaki burgers, which would be sort of interesting to launch in America if someone had a thought to do it. But a lot of the food from around the world is a little different because of different cultures, because of different um, palates, because of different taste buds. All you name it and the flavors, it can be different. But in truth, when we have to take a survey about these things, we literally want to know why are we answering some of these questions that seem a little ridiculous. All it does is produce for them interesting marketing data, but that dark data is skewed. What we really want to know is do we like the food? Do we like the people? Did we have a good experience? And would we go back? And that's pretty much it because in life, we're making customers for life. I talk about this a great deal because I've been to a lot of places where the management in their 30s mainly don't realize that they are producing a result. When someone approaches the manager to speak with them, they're representing not only the company, they're representing the entire brand and the president or the owner of that entire brand. They don't think about that a lot of times. They just make an instantaneous little decision, either based on policy or based on some sort of practice. And they don't often take the moment to go, okay, what is my flexibility here to make a marketing moment in time that really sells our company well to help one little individual? I may not get this question ever again in life. I may never get this request ever again in life. What could I do differently in this moment of time within all the boundaries and parameters of my opportunities in this job to make a difference for someone who's homeless, to make a difference for someone who's impoverished, to make a difference for someone who's not in the affluent food set, if you will, in life? And practically, how do we do that? In life, marketing moments of time are what we do every single minute of the day. When we sit in a restaurant, we have opportunities to talk to realized strangers and find out if they know how to help us move further on in life. Sometimes God puts us in the path of people, but if we never talk to them, we'll never know. And that's the reality that some gal that I knew a little while ago, who's moved my entire life into something totally different, has taught me about life. You have to be willing to talk to people. She would often complain about other people about how they wouldn't pick up the phone and talk to people, but it's hard. A lot of people don't get those social skills sets like she had having been a part of the popular crowd and the musical singing group in high school and all the things she did in college that made her who she became as an amazing, fabulous professional woman today. But in reality, other people need that training. Young people in church groups need that training of how to network with professionals because let's face it, every single person, every single human being has to produce an employment. They have to either produce an employment or they have to produce a passion in which to produce a company on their own right or that of the rights and the teamwork of other people. And that's what we have to think about in today's world is how do we produce a company that will not be bothered by other people? What I mean by that is that there are people out there who utilize technology to dampen, to destroy, to steal the life work of other people and try to sell it as if it's their own. That is not only illegal underneath most of the federal laws that we have in this land about intellectual copyright and, uh, excuse me, intellectual property and copyright law and every other aspect of um, protecting assets and confidentiality 
and proprietary information, but in truth, what we're really looking at is how do we produce a life that is based on our own souls, what the Lord has put within us, what has grown within us, what we pursue in our passions, which we pursue in our free time, preferably not all gaming, because no offense, that gaming skills you got aren't going to produce one little thing for you. Even if you go into a contest, you'll probably not make the millions you think you're going to make. We have to produce a love of the language because people sound moronic when they use a lot of profanity, and I've used a little bit over the course of time in my Magic and Mayhem series, because of the passion I feel for my own life. But how dare people, particularly in an authority mindset, think they have the right to take my life away from me based on the international human rights law that apply to every single nation of the world, as well as the federal laws that apply to every single human being who is born an American citizen and those who establish their own citizenship through whatever means they do it lawfully and legally. In my case, I had someone here in this land here totally legally. And I know something about the struggles of foreigners in trying to be a part of our land. We also allow in the wrong people because they can walk across the border sometimes. And then we allow some folks to stay because of their athletic skill sets or their incredible minds. And maybe those people should go back home and utilize those proper skills in their own home countries. You see, allowing people here for the creative arts is something we do all the time with movie actors. That's how they get a pass to travel and go to different lands. But the regular folks should be able to do that too. And that's something we have to look at is how do we produce life for those who have less than less? Last night, I literally froze my ass off, excuse the language, outside of a shop. And it was only one little girl who was a part of a team at McDonald's who said, it's eight minutes before we open. It's perfectly fine for the man to come in and use the toilet and wait until we're ready to prepare for, for, for breakfast. And that took smarts. And I've watched this little girl do her position, and she is quite good. She's very savvy, she's skilled, and she deserves a raise, frankly. And I'm going to make sure her boss knows it, but her boss is her same age, so I'm going to have to go a little higher up the food chain to make sure they keep honoring the kids that are good. There's another lovely gal here with a beautiful soul who does have some special needs. And she was phenomenal, talking to me, asking me how my day was, asking me how I was, just going through the things that probably one of her good, loving parents taught her to say, or something one of a good quality training manager let her know how to handle herself. What we need to, though, is make sure is that the men here are also looking out for her, making sure that she's protected from the vipers of the world who would make fun, who would steal, who would trip, who would do all the immature little things that a teenager does. And that's what I'm concerned with as a person who likes to care for others in this world. In this world, we have two ways to go on in life. We can either go on in a selfish little mindset that we are superior to others, or we can go on in the attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is, I'm going to serve other people until the last of my days, regardless of how much money it brings me or how much life I have left in me. But there are practically people, police officers and others, and I'm going to hit their asses every single time, who violate our federal rights, who ruin our mobility, who take away our civil rights, and our abilities to go places and interfere with our right to even make new acquaintances because they think that the Lord somehow gave them some sort of idea that they need to do something. I've literally had my life threatened by their little stooges, their little uh, snitches, and openly by one police officer last evening, implying that when I was getting what I was requested of me, my driver's license, that I was reaching for something else. And I could have smacked him if he wasn't in that uniform and with that, that gun on him. But that's a man talking. How dare you talk to me this way when you represent the politicians of the community, when you're supposed to represent my rights, and you're not. You're pulling a man who's walking over in the freezing cold, trying to get someplace before it freezes his butt off to, to on his plan for the evening. But you guys keep showing up as if you have immorally, illegally, and unethically, practically tagged my body in a way that makes it no sense why you can find me on every little dirt country road I walk on. If you put something in my equipment, that's illegal. If you put something on my body, that's incredibly immoral. If you did this without my permission, I should sue your bottom. But openly, I'm talking about real life for real people. That there are people out there who harm our rights intentionally because they have this blue line they want to talk about. Now, practically, I'm off track in my plan for talking in this audio cast. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to pause, and I'm going to put this on hold. But the next time I get by law officer, I'm going to make sure that the feds who've been watching their little butts behave so immorally take care of them. And I believe they have a different way of handling that in that government. But we'll let them figure that out and feel it on their own.